Silver Wolf is getting a rerun soon. Is she still worth it? Yes. My Silver Wolf here is S1 and E6. So I'm gonna also specifically go over Eidolons if you are looking at them or if her light cone is worth it. First and foremost, her traces, she is fully maxed out and her relic set, she's using Space Healing Station and Genius of Brilliant Stars. Overall stats is 61, 103 with only 53 effect hit rate. She is built with crit rate, speed, quantum, attack. I will be testing out an attack orb to tell you which one's better later on. So subscribe if you want and are interested in that. For her light cone in particular, because this can be a pretty high investment, I honestly think it's not necessarily worth it for the vast majority of you. Her standard option is before the tutorial mission starts. This is great if you want to give it to somebody like Pela, because you can essentially just slide that on over and fix energy regeneration issues as well. For Silver Wolf, however, if you are looking at her light cone and you don't want the and you care a lot about the energy regeneration that one has. Her E1 gives her that, essentially. The main benefit of using her light cone and her signature in particular is first off, the art is extremely good. And second off, the effect hit rate, whilst being lower, trades off for 12% crit rate and an additional 12% team damage. Keep in mind, yes, this improves her own damage, but it improves everyone else who attacks the enemy. This is a decent bonus, but I think it has more value only if you're looking at characters who actually deal damage. So your Lynx, for example, won't be dealing too much damage, but your Sealy and your Fushuan may. So in that instance, a 12% damage bonus to everybody on the team is nice, but I think I would prefer it if it were something similar to a either damage bonus to the units directly, similar to something like Branya's, or if this was instead just a defense down. We're looking at her Eidolons, I can honestly say E1 is a nice bonus to have. It does work a lot better if you were to go with something like an energy regeneration rope, because it does mean she can ult spam. But E2 is kind of the main point here. It reduces enemies effect resistance and that's perfectly fine. Great even if you don't want to focus so heavily on effect hit rates. This allows you to build her more out as a DPS. At E2 though, her damage isn't going to be extremely good. I think that at E2 her damage will be nice. I think vaguely similar to somebody like Fu Xuan, or even theoretically similar to somebody like Yu Kong. But once you go higher and higher up, her damage begins to match someone like a Hunt character. And this means that Silver Wolf, and a lot of times for me, has been the main DPS of my team. As in, instead of running Seely as a DPS, I will swap her out and run a Silver Wolf and solely focus on buffing her up. Whether this be by throwing in a Fushuan for the crits or even a Branya. I've made a Silver Wolf main DPS or a Silver Wolf primary DPS team strictly built around the fact that I don't want to use Seely and all I need to do is buff her up to the maximum priority and the maximum percent she can be. If you're wondering about damage comparisons, well, first and foremost, Seely will deal more damage than Silver Wolf. Seely also will get more turns strictly because she has, especially with E2, a bunch of speed. But Silver Wolf is a bit easier to play around. She's more skill point efficient if you choose to use that. She does help out her team's damage, especially if they're quantum. And obviously investing into her means she can be utilized a lot more. If you get a Seely and then get a Jing Liu and then a Blade, your Seely's replaced. If you get a Silver Wolf, you can still slide her in pretty much anywhere as long as you just want the damage or if you specifically want to add a weakness. Regardless of that, her E3 isn't, it's a decent bonus to have. Her essentially, her skill and her talent, her skill is just a defense down. Yes, the base chance is high, but you can alter that with something like an affected rate chest piece. Instead, what you're focusing on is the all type resistance. That essentially allows every character to deal slightly more damage at level 12. It's a 10% damage bonus essentially, which is nice, but nothing to really write home about. The damage itself on this skill is great, especially with its thoughts like Rudolent Arena. And then her talent, all three of these bugs are great. Defense reduction is nice, reducing enemies attack means less damage, and then reducing speed means less turns. This does also work really well with her light cone because you want a specific amount of debuffs a character to have. This works great in a healer team, especially if you pair your silver wolf with somebody like Pela. Her E4, this is one of the situations in which you have people who are kind of confused, especially with E6 and E4 doing essentially the exact same thing. Is it better to run an attack percent orb? Because this is all quantum damage, 20% of silver wolf's attack. This means that because you are relying on debuffs to get the maximum bonus out of each of these, the damage percent can otherwise be essentially overshadowed if you were to just flood her with attack. Quantum damage orb here. That means she already has inbuilt quantum damage, but she's dealing more quantum damage for every, every debuff, which is 100% quantum damage. And then you have additional damage here. 
So there is a bit of debate as to whether or not attack percent orb is better. I will be testing this out because I had the luxury of being able to do that, but I don't really see too much information regarding either one of them. And my main consideration is this. If your silver wolf was already built with quantum damage bonus, keep it like that. Because even though both of these are higher damages, the E4 only applies to your ultimate. So that if you build her out with attack percents, you may arbitrarily be lowering her damage in other ways so long as you aren't using her ultimate. And even though her E6 is just an overall damage bonus for every debuff, you still have a ramp up time associated with that. And if you don't apply a bunch of debuffs to your enemies really quickly, she's dealing lower damage overall. I would say if you're looking for this E1 energy, E2 is kind of the stopping point. E3, E is eh, E4, eh, E5 and E6 are great. Realistically, these two are quality life changes. This is additional damage and it's nice, but it only applies to ultimate, meaning that you would ideally want to focus on getting an old spam build oriented around her. And then E6 is wonderful if you just want to make her into your main DPS because it's an all damage increase. For relic sets, quantum, that's literally it. It's the only choice for any quantum character who's going to be dealing damage. Fu Xuan, if you really want to, you could run a quantum set on her. Jing Liu, you could run a quantum set on her. Lynx, I don't recommend it, but you could run a quantum set on her. Quantum is the only thing to go for. Space Ceiling Station is something I've used before, and I do use it often, but the thing is, Rudolent Arena works extremely well if a lot of you will be building out your Civil Wolf solely for supportive capabilities. She's only going to be using her skill to implant a weakness, so it's great, and the basic attack is pretty much all she's going to be doing aside from ulting. Inert Sao Soto has a lower crit requirement, but she's not doing follow-up attacks. The ultimate damage bonus is quite nice. Just not as nice in my opinion as the consistency of both of these, though it does need you to have much higher crit. As you see, even my Silver Wolf does not have the required crit. Even though this gives her 12%, this does not appear in her stat line. So as a result, I'd say if you want to, just go for Space Ceiling Station because it's a generally flexible set to have. It's just a nice damage bonus. It's not necessarily as specific as this one. Though keep in mind, these are DPS oriented sets. If you're in a position to where you're required to build her out more for a supportive capability because you don't have the E2 to really allow you to build that out, you have other options. Pan Galactic is great for getting that effect hit rate and you want to go for effect hit rate main body piece. And you could theoretically go for a break effect oriented set. Yes, you could sacrifice an energy recharge rope for a break effect rope which could deal more damage, but it depends on Silver Wolf breaking the enemy as opposed to another character. Musketeers work great if you want that additional speed and basic attack damage, especially if you are only going to be putting her out for that basic attack, not the ultimates. Overall, she's a flexible character with a lot of options, but her value has diminished as we've moved away from Quantum being essentially the only DPS option. Instead, now we have Ice, we have Imaginary, we're going to be having Fire, and even Lightning characters like Jing Yuan have gotten a buff with Kafka as well. So Silver Wolf is still a great unit and you can build her in a variety of different ways, but as a DPS or sub DPS, her value does drop significantly in comparison to the competition. She is still the only character who can add a weakness. And if you are looking for that and looking to buff your quantum teams, she's going to be a great addition. If this helped, consider leaving a like down below, subscribing, and I'll see you next time.